There's a cockroach infestation in my 42 million dollar mansion. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music. I'm sore because I was uh, at the gym. I was lifting, you know, working hard. I went to a concert yesterday. I went to Fleet Foxes and I had a great time. I was at Barricade. There were a couple of people who recognized me, so shout out to them. Lucas Graham! I don't know why we're shouting Lucas Graham. Is it because I went to a concert? I learned what it meant to order something on the rocks. Because I was like, I'm gonna get a drink, right? You know, it's a special occasion. I saw... Patron and I'm like oh, Patron, you know, I've heard that in songs before let me let me get one of those Okay, they were like, oh, okay. Yeah, do you want it on the rocks? I'm like sure I didn't know what the fuck that meant. I was like sure I ended up spending $70 $70 on Patron. I saw the price tag of 70 bucks. I was like the fuck This is a Vera and Yeho, dude Part one of this, we went through songs 100 uh, to 51, and honestly, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, I kind of expected it to suck from seeing the songs on this list, but the impossible happened, and I ended up actually enjoying uh, the majority of the tracks that I listened to, with the exception of a good handful of stinkers. This second half, the top 50, I am actually even more worried about as the songs here seem significantly worse. There are songs on here that I know for a fact I despise. Thunder by Imagine Dragons, Stressed Out by 21 Pilots, tons of Justin Bieber, tons of Ed Sheeran, tons of Drake. Oh God, it's 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 a nightmare. It, it looks like a complete and total nightmare, but, 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 maybe I'll end up loving some of this shit that I didn't think I would enjoy. I mean, as you can see, there's like one or two hearts here. Let's not just immediately assume it's gonna suck. Let's go in each song and see how we feel. Starting with the first track of the day is Let Me Love You by DJ Snake and Justin Bieber. There's a lot of songs called Let Me Love You. Never let you go, never let me down. Not only do these streams not get taken down, but the last video I made is fully monetized. Yeah. If you preview six seconds of audio of something, it is technically legal. And because copyright laws are, laws are stupid, you just do that over and over and over again. And technically, every little bit and piece you're showing is contextually important. Bruh, what the f- what the f-, f That is the worst drop ever. It's good pre-chorus too. Let Me Love You has one of Justin Bieber's more likable vocal performances with some pretty decent lyrics to it, but I feel like a bad drop on this song is a killer. I don't know how many people actually really enjoy this drop, especially in comparison with many of the other ones, feeling like a total tonal shift. No, if the drop did what it was supposed to do and it elevated this song to like a, a more euphoric, almost to the stars sort of location, this song would be spectacular. When that drop hits, the bass is nice, the feeling of this track works. The bass is crispy. Like there's something about a line like that that makes this song feel like it was written by a real human being and not a boardroom. Okay, you're only the the song is immaculately produced. The sound is wonderful, but it's still dark, it's still ethereal, it matches the album it's a part of. I had a big issue with Stoney just feeling like a complete mess. Post Malone's voice uh, just not doing it for me. I didn't care for the writing, I didn't care for the vibe at all. Um, and I feel like Beer Bongs and Bentleys is pretty much where Post Malone took whatever the fuck was going on on that album and just scrapped it and went superstar mode, and I think that he came out with some absolutely spectacular bangers like this. I think the fact that every part of this song is so catchy, the fact that it's such an earworm, and the fact that it's so well produced makes it a track that even if you're not in the mood for, uh, if it is something that comes on in the background, it's hard to be upset at. Roses, uh, St. JH, and I, I don't know what this is. This is the first song that I can't say I necessarily know what it is, so uh, here we go. 
the TikTok song. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't- how does this have so many fucking views? Am I just that out of touch? This came out September 2019, 1.6 billion views? The fuck? How? You know what? Let's pretend that- Whoa! What? That's a pretty good remix. I like that subtle moment here. Uh, I don't think the vocals are atrocious, so I actually think there's a vibe here with pitching it up like this. Uh, it gives it a completely different feeling. Uh, the vocals are supposed to be a sample in the background, and the beat's kind of taking control here. Uh, in terms of a track that you can kind of move along with, I think this is actually pretty okay. Um, I've heard the original song, and yeah, this is actually an interesting transformation of it. Maybe not like the most, like, mind-blowing combination uh, certainly virality is a factor as to this thing being as big as it is, but it's okay. I've been, I've been losing sleep. Next song is from, uh, One Republic. What a fall from grace, dude. I don't know what the fuck happened to this band. I don't know what, where things went wrong, but they are literally making some of the worst music I've ever heard right now. You know what? I should show you an example. They have a new song, uh, I Ain't Worried. I Ain't Worried is the newest song. They made it for the Top Gun soundtrack or whatever. Either way, I was at a restaurant yesterday, they were playing this song, and it's nauseating. It has everything that sucks about uh, generic ass alternative radio station rock music all put into one song, while also sell sounding like the biggest sellout track that's ever existed. Listen to this shit. You're, it's it's mind-blowingly bad. I don't know what you've been told. Home Depot floor, dude. This is, this is what Run, One Republic's become. This is One Republic. Here we go. Look, One Republic went from making pretty decent pop rock tracks to literal NPC music. The whistling is so bad. This song is so garbage. They peaked at Counting Stars, and I actually remember liking this track, so I'm hoping that coming back to it, I'm going to enjoy it. Why are people saying AJR? Because AJR is not that far off from what we just heard. AJR strives to make the most formulaic, but at the same time most obnoxiously annoying pop music that's ever existed. Uh, and they're also for some reason labeled as alternative. Build a house together, brother. Ooh, I like the little flute in the back. Shit, nice. The vibe is pretty strong. They do have energy here. I don't love the production here though. See, I also think the fact that this song came out in 2013 is to its benefit because this sound was not nearly as like washed up as it is nowadays. If you make a song that sounds like this nowadays, then straight up you're you're just making a fucking Home Depot commercial. Like, I, I don't want to listen to that shit. But in 2013, this was not as popular, at least what they were doing was not nearly as popular as it is today to like replicate the same crappy sound. And I feel like the wide variety of instrumentation on this track is... You know, a lot nicer than whatever the fuck I just listened to on that last song. And aboard. Look, Counting Stars, I'm not super in love with the track, but, but it has its place. I think it's okay. I'd give it a shrug. Don't love it, but... Leagues better than any of the shit they've been doing. Next song we have is Avicii with Wake Me Up. Love that guitar, by the way. Feeling my way through the darkness. They say I'm caught up in a dream. Well, life will pass me by if I don't open up my eyes. Wake me up when it's all over. As soon as I say that that last song doesn't necessarily feel like an oversaturation of this sound, we have Wake Me Up, which is doing a very similar aesthetic, but mixing it with EDM to make it feel refreshing. The guitar is really nice, and once these drums, these drums come in, it doesn't feel nearly as corny or tacky. It actually works as, a, as an aesthetic piece. 
Oh, it's such a nice riser too, so instant. Oh, and this, mm. Look, before this became the Roblox core sound, this, oh, it's still, it's such a catchy, nice little lick. The sample is so good, dude. The, the, the actual mix on that guitar, dude, that, that shit kind of gold. Part is so heart like gut wrenching, dude. So I like returning to this song with this new perspective, as this drop isn't necessarily ev like everything you could expect from like a hard hitting, crazy, like emotional blow up of a track like this. Instead, it feels a little bit more like a vibe, like it's boom, dun, da, 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 da. and I feel like. It's kind of misrepresented by such amazing, like, like crazy risers to kind of go directly into it uh, for it to just sort of vibe out and just kind of uh, ride a wave. I think that this song is actually a really tasteful combination of folk, country, being a song basically about not wanting to deal with the world and wanting to disappear, something that I feel like a lot of EDM is about, um, but I don't feel like a lot of EDM brings the, uh, the, the incredible vocals. Uh, that you get here from uh, from Aloe Black just literally fills out this song and makes it makes it his own. One of those songs that I think is aged maybe not the best in terms of the sound, but in terms of what it's going for, in terms of what it's doing, uh, I think it's still pretty enjoyable. All right, so far I haven't hated any songs. That's a good sign. Next song, Lean On. Dude, everyone's complaining already. Cultural appropriation. Let's go. Teary a bit. We're about to get to the best part here. At least I think it's the best part, but it might not be. You know why? Because I think that this synth is the worst part about it, which is pretty much DJ uh, Snake's mainline inclusion to this track. And I think that it works better on the radio when everything is generic radio filler, but in a vacuum, it sounds a little bit awkward. I like Lean On, and I actually really like this part at the end here, which I feel like is a, a nice little spice to it, kind of that little solo. I could see it's very polarizing, uh, but I personally have never had an issue with it. I, I think that it's catchy. Formulaic EDM radio filler, but it's one of the catchier tracks, so I still pretty much enjoy this. Yeah. Next, we have Sorry by Justin Bieber. Oh my God, Justin Bieber, sorry. He's so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you guys worried? Pause. You gotta go and get angry at all of my honesty. Dog. YouTuber apology core? No, like actually though. Nice guys finish last core. I hope I don't run out of time cause someone call a referee. Okay, who the fuck wrote this? That that would be like on a throwaway Lil Dicky cipher, dude. What the fuck? That is such a bad punchline and such a bad timing for a punchline. What the hell is this song? Is it too late now to say sorry? What the hell are those horns? Wow. Wow, what a gentleman. This is some great protagonist music here. And I have a feeling Justin Bieber didn't even write this song. And I mean, it's a huge hit, so it's clearly successful. I just think, what the fuck? Ew, these horns are so bad. It's just these like loud horn shots going burnt with like a ton of reverb on them. They sound horrible. They sound so out of place. And this drop is so bad. Take every single piece of the blame if you want me to. Wow, incredible. But you know that there's no innocent one in this game for two. Did he not say that he cheated on her a hundred times or something? Dude, what the fuck is this? Oh, is it too late now to say sorry? Sorry. Oh. This song is a disaster. That sounds okay, it's a shrug, I know. 
You were like, Bradley, what the fuck is happening? Why are you giving this song a shrug? You know why? Because as bad as the lyrics are, as bad as the lyrics are, I don't give a shit. And I've never cared about the lyrics, and they're easily ignorable, and the song sounds okay in the background. As much as I hate the lyrics of this song, they are so ignorable that I don't give a shit. I just simply don't give a shit, and the song sounds okay in the background. Like, it's, it's forgettable, and if I wasn't paying attention, then, like, I still like the fact that there's a story going on. I know, my ape brain still appreciates, even though it's unlikable, even though it's extremely unlikable, there's a story going on that I could follow along with, which is more engaging than many of these other tracks that are just plain boring. In fact, the stimulation I get from the anger towards this song, I would even consider to be a, a decent improvement. Yeah, unlikable, douchebaggy, but yet entertaining enough to hold my attention, even though I don't love the song. Oh, sweet mother of God, we got a meme song next. We have Let Her Go by Passenger. Is there a, please, is there anyone who actually listens to this song unironically? Like, seriously, is there, is there a single fucking person who listens to this unironically, dude? One hit Wonderland? My mom, sometimes, used to in middle school. This, this shit is actually Hallmark postcard background music. Like, like if you sent a card to your grandma, this is, this is the kind of music that would be playing in the background of it. I'm sorry, but like, what the fuck is this? Why does this have 1.6 billion streams? I remember when this song came out and was popular. In what fucking world did this song get so many streams? I'm so confused. What, what happened? Where did the steamroll of this track come from? It is NPC music, I agree. Well, you only need the light when it's burning cold. Only miss the sun, only know you love her when you let her go. Why does this sound so disingenuous? Like, why is it that his singing does not sound like there's an ounce of passion in the way that he's singing this? Is it just like the... I actually find this to be impossible for me personally to connect to. Yo, is this Karma Police? Yes. Maybe one day you'll understand why. Everything you touch. Holy shit, I hope with this song you guys understand my point with the Justin Bieber song because Jesus fucking Christ. What the hell is this, dude? This is a fucking joke of a song. This is terrible. This is so unstimulating on top of it. But this song is halfway over. Who has the patience to sit through this entire song, man? You know... I get why they're called Passenger. Passenger. Think about it. Passenger to real life. NPC. Passenger makes NPC music. That's it. They're, they're, they're the person rowing at the back of the boat. They're the passenger. They're, they're one of the faces in the plane. I get it. This song is terrible. Red headphones. Dog. Also, never don't unironically use NPC, please. That is like such a horrible thing to actually say to someone. It makes you sound like a uh, a narcissistic asshole. Like if you, I I'm doing that as a joke, but I'm just letting you guys know that that is actually really terrible. Nobody pray for me. It been a day for me. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you notice how video can't be seen or monetized for anything involving Kendrick Lamar. I don't make the rules, you know. Unfortunately, so we're going to listen to this. On mute. I'm sorry. I, I, meaning I'm going to listen. You guys can't. Next song, Humble uh, by Kendrick Lamar. Of course, muted for uh, copyright. Unfortunately, the chat is just going to have to sit here and suffer as the lyrics go across. Well, yeah, yeah. Hey, I remember syrups. Shit, my singing was too accurate. That's unfortunate. Wow, you hate to see it. Well, uh, I'm gonna have to be a little more out of key, I guess, to make that, uh, to make that work. <laughs> Guys, I've made a mistake. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that, uh, that that animation does actually unmute the, um, Okay, it's okay. You know, we, um, 
I mean, in that case, we might as well just play the song, you know? Because, I mean, the harm's already done, so. My left stroke just went viral. Song boring as a motherfucker, dude. Humble is not a great song from Kendrick Lamar. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't see why this is such a big hit. Uh, I feel like it was the momentum of the single that really drove this thing to be as huge as it is, as well as the uh, Photoshop line. Uh, there's a lot of factors that make this song as big as it is. I just do not think it's his best song. I think that it's good. It's fun. I overall enjoy the track. He has better songs on Damn. He has much better songs in general. Good. Now that I've got you guys happy, we got Sicko Mode. Asshole. Yo, is that Drake? It's funny how my issue with the uh, with the switch up and all the issues I've had with this song have just kind of gone away with time. I've gotten used to it. It's almost become the new wave. This album's amazing, though I have not listened to it since the uh, Astro World incident. I say incident, I just, more like a travesty. Travesty? You know what I'm saying? I'm stealing my own soul for that one. That was terrible. I mean, it was an accident, but then I realized what I said, and I was like, okay. Travis Scott is not the reason this song sounds as good as it does, okay? Maybe he pointed in the right directions, but the people, the people that he actually treats like garbage are a big reason why his music sounds as good as it does, so... That's that's personally how I feel. I love this song. It's a great song, um, but he made a great product with bloody hands. No, Travis actually thinks people are. No, that's actually true. Travis, like unironically, thinks people are N NPCs. Now, I have a question for you. Okay, by this time in the passenger song, okay, how many people were asleep? All right, this song is, like, it's the halfway mark, right? It's a vibe all the way through up to this point. It is so good up to this point. And it's about to have a giant switch up, making it feel fresh and new. Asshole. Oh, this beat, asshole. Yeah. Back, Back in high school, school I, used I used to bust, bust a lot of dance. nuts. Yeah. My eyes, uh, Jesus Christ, yeah. Checks over stripes, yeah. Putting aside my confused uh, frustration towards Travis Scott at the current moment, I think that Sicko Mode is potentially the best song on this list so far. It's a smiley ball for me. It is one of the best trap songs I've ever heard, period. The intro is amazing. The way that it leads into Travis's part is really nice. The introduction of Drake is still nice and honestly a little surprising even now. Uh, as his appearance is actually pretty cool to to get the song started. The second half is wonderful. The vibe is great. Drake kills it. I mean, Drake brings one of his best performances just in terms of the vibe and the energy, which is good because, you know, Travis, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what method he uses to get every single artist he collaborates with to bring their best, but I feel like that's one of the things that makes this project so wonderful. Um, yeah. Great song. Hey, I've been, I've been thinking, I want you to Next we have Happier by Marshmello and Bastille with 1.7 billion views released August 2018. Here we go. Bro, this shit giving me whiplash. What the fuck? Why is No, this is like you know how I say, like, oh, the music's so happy, but the lyrics are so down? This shit actually the most, like, extreme example I might have ever heard of that in my life. And only for a minute to leave. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've heard the song before, but I gotta say, sitting down and analyzing this shit, it is actual, uh, like, an actual tonality nightmare. Like, that seemed like one of the things that, you know, in a casual setting, I didn't really care too much about because, you know, the, the dreariness of this song can be kind of drowned out, but man, when it's staring you right in the face, what the fuck is this combination? 
I'm sorry, but like literally this loud lead synth blasting in the background almost is serving as like a distraction from the song of I want you to be happy. And it's like, ba, 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 ba. Who can relate? I'm divorcing my wife. She took the kids. Beat drop. Sub bass, bro. In what world? I swear to God, I want to like this song. I like the vocals quite a lot. I'm not a big Bastille fan, but I feel like he does a really good job here at selling this. But man, what the fuck? Why? Why is this song like this? I really want to enjoy this. As there are pieces here that I enjoy, but they are all washed out through a tsunami of bullshit, man. This is such a frustrating song to listen to. How am I supposed to be an optimist about this? Exactly, dude. Dog This is a disaster. Next song we have. Ah. 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 Stressed out by 21 Pilots. Released April 2015. Um, 1.7 billion streams. Hey, what's up, Bradley from the future here. There's literally 20 minutes of footage for this one song. I somehow rant about this song for 20 minutes. My favorite song. Oh, the reggae is so good. Ten out of ten. Oh yeah, it is proto AGR. That's the thing is AGR ripped off their entire shtick from 21 Pilots. And you can see it. I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite clips. This has slowly become one of my favorite clips ever. This exact event was a, a fan, I would say a fan, held up a sign that literally said, LOL, you're not Tyler Joseph. Now, this is a really degenerate thing to do, but it's also very funny and it's also very true. And it also very much offended Jack. Don't ever do this shit. This is terrible behavior. But you could just see that this one cut deep because at the end of the day, this shit's so true. This, this shit... The other thing that's funny is that they hold it up and they were so quick about it. Like they wrote an insult on the poster and they brought it to the concert and they held it up and they saw, I guess they didn't think I would see it, but I did see it. And then right away they start making sure that I know that they know every lyric in the show. Oh no, don't throw out my leg. I was like, no, I promise we actually are fans. Yeah? Did I get that about right? Okay. You, you love me? I don't know about that. I don't know, hey, come on. The sign says different. Also, the Sark. <laughs> First off, it's not just you're not Tyler Joseph, it's LOL. You're not Tyler Joseph. So. Copium, see you next yeah. Time. <laughs> That's not Main character syndrome? Yeah, that is one of the least chill responses I've ever seen to any situation ever. You can just see how deep that cut did. Like, like you thought I was, you thought I was joking. You thought I was over exaggerated. This man's entire identity was just questioned through one person holding up a sign, and he decided to make the biggest deal out of it. But yeah, anyways, yeah. This, uh, in case you're wondering why, okay, it's because this Twenty One Pilots stressed out. I wish we can go back and be kids again. Is the entire, the entire. Everything that AJR is based around. Not only that, but they rip off the sound of these songs, too. Listen to this. Okay, right, you got that in your head? Now let's listen to the wonderful song titled Birthday Party by AJR. Oh my god, this song is a hood classic. It's a classic. No, but really, it's one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my life. And it straight up sounds exactly like this. You can kind of hear it, but you'll really hear it when the drums come in. Here it comes. Homie, it's not even subtle. It's not even subtle, dude. <laughs> It's literally the same. It's the same shit. Except one is significantly better sounding than the other. 
Kokichi says, when I was young, when I first heard about Blurry Face, someone ended up interpreting it as a corrupt executive guy that made everything into nightmare drone music. I have no idea where to find it, but I've been thinking about it for six years. That is a really interesting interpretation that also can lead to a lot of creative pathways, as well as a really interesting uh, lane of interpretation. That is actually so fascinating. That, I mean, like, that's the thing, though, is, like, if you can get something like that in your head, then it can completely change the way you listen to an album and can make it, like, an extremely interesting listen. Because I, I know the direct, like, exactly the, the lore studied by the 21 Pilots experts. I did a three, I'm not shitting you, three-hour video going over the entire lore of 21 Pilots, and you know what? I like the music even less afterwards. And I thought the lore was cool. But that's how bad the music is, in my opinion. Is that the lore being interesting just shows how much of an executive failure this fucking music is. It actually is doing the lore a disservice. It, it, like, my name's Blurry Face and I care what you think. <laughs> the fuck? Are you kidding me with this shit? What a fucking joke, dude. <laughs> oh, ghost emojis. In this segment that I decided to speed up, I talk about these lyrics and why I don't like them, as well as I bring up the theater interpretive dance that someone did to this song again. Seriously, I I, I could not, <laughs> I could not get over this song. I've never noticed those shitty warped horns before, but that really makes me think of AGR nowadays. This is Blurry Face speaking, by the way. Blurry Face solo. Because it's pitched down. Stressed Out is garbaggio. But I've heard this song too many times. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'd rather enjoy it than not enjoy it, okay? I don't enjoy this song. What am I kidding? This song sucks ass. Dog. I'm so sick of hearing this shit, dude. I then go on another four minute rant about two different occasions of 21 Pilots songs uh, frustrating me. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on this track. I'm just gonna skip forward. You ain't getting over him. I got him. But him. Bruh, okay, one sec, guys. This is... I need spam protection. Yo, this is for kids who can't behave, okay? This is where we uh, we go in and we pretty much dictate everything. We say, oh, you guys can't do links, excess symbols. We could literally make it so that you get permanently timed out. Damn, 600 is fair. Whatever. 10 minutes. Fuck you. All right. Limit. Uh, let's go with that. I'm standing back from it. I finally see. Okay, so New Rules is a catchy song that I think is pretty decent from Dua Lipa, but I, admittingly, I don't think that this is her strongest avenue. Uh, and I think that it was, like, her next album that really defined her sound and where she, like, you know, made a name for herself in pop. I think that New Rules is decent, but at the same time, until her new project, I had no clue who the fuck Dua Lipa was. Seriously, it's a name that would just fall into the crowd for me if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, she, she eventually actually decided on what she wanted to do past this. I think the beat's incredible, by the way. Like, the beat of this song is next level. Smoke Perp Freestyle song? Yeah, who, who here hasn't heard the Smoke Perp Freestyle, by the way? To take a beat that's this good and to put Lil Uzi on it as he just basically croons and fucks his way through this song is embarrassing and I still have a big issue with that. Because at the end of the day, yeah, production can carry, but at this point, why is it carrying this dude? Especially in the early point of his career, where he just was doing this fucking unlikable act that just came off to me as just a, a load of bullshit.
Exotour Life has a pretty interesting chorus. The push me, push me to the edge, all my friends are dead refrain is really striking and does a good job at like making this song really stand out. Uh, it's clear why this was a hit uh, now looking back, um, but I just don't love the verses sounding like literal crooning filler, making this song just fucking devoid to me of any sort of <laughs> likable qualities. And I mean, shit, the, the scream singing is fucking horrendous. It is so bad, but it's got a good chorus, so it's a shrug. I'll take, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those condoms. I'm waiting on wow, I, I always thought he said worry about those condoms. I never knew he actually said comments. Uh, wow, okay. Shit, you guys thought the same thing? I like the warp synths here, making this whole song feel very drunk. Uh, the vibe of this is really strong. Once the drop comes in, it almost feels like a roller coaster starting. <laughs> COVID disinformation ass song, black and white apology video head ass song. The fuck you guys want from Kendrick? What, you want him to steal the show with some mind blowing fucking bars and shit? That shit would not work for this song. His verse is not, you know, incredible and technical in a way but his name brand value that he brings to this track is is enough to get people to like have just absurd expectations of it where what he does is just continue the psychedelic feeling which shows to me even more that he has a really strong understanding of what music uh, you know what to do with music instead of an artist like you know a crypt you know um, let me show you the best song of all time okay I don't even know if this has anything to do with what I'm talking about but it's definitely worth showing you Okay. My mind, all these sensitive topics are bottled up really tight, and I can take a sip because taking this sip brings my demons to life. I'm not alright, I'm not okay. I don't wanna feel today all the way. So now that you've heard that, okay, do you prefer spiritual, lyrical, miracle about your feelings? Done in probably the worst way I might have ever heard in my life with an absolutely awful generic piano beat and an overcompensating flow to say the least. Or strong vibe that makes you feel this level of depression and depravity uh, through interesting party situations and warped synthesizers. I like the, uh, I like the other one. This one, that is. As it's actually fun to listen to. Smiley Ball. <laughs> Oh, sweet mother of God, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Jocelyn Florence. Classic. Jocelyn Florence by XXX Tentacion is barely a song coming in at two minutes with a single verse and barely a uh, chorus. Well, I'm not a fan of this song and how it sounds. I will say it's one of the more uh, emotionally impactful, uh, one of the more real written songs that has come from X. So I give it credit for that, and I'd even say it's, it's up there in terms of X's discography. I'm going to give it a red headphones. Song is bare as shit. The sample is boring as shit. The chorus is boring as shit. The mix is terrible. Sounds like it was put together in 15 minutes. Next song, Seven Rings by Ariana Grande. Everyone's favorite Ariana Grande song that they have no issue with whatsoever that has no controversy. This beat is so ass. The interpolation of all my favorite things is so ass. I actually enjoy the album this is from, and I think this album has a couple of really amazing bangers, but this one just does not fucking do it for me. Rad taste in music, but the R is silent. That's that's genius. Thank you for the two. Ah, this song is um I just I just find it kind of corny. <laughs> I get it. 
it's ironic. She's clearly doing this shit to overcompensate for something, which explains the attitude of it and why it's so... Like, why it's like a scene ripped straight out of Mean Girls. I think once you kind of understand that it becomes a lot more likable because it's clearly doing this as an aesthetic choice. I don't know, it's it's weird because this song is like super popular and is likely been picked up in a way that isn't like ironic, you know, but the actual original song and intention seems to be to get that message across. An interesting situation. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this reminded me of Nav. I don't know why, but like maybe it's the basic ass lyricism and the one note flow. Am I crazy? Maybe a little. Demon Rings has enough stuff going on with it to make me say that I don't hate it. I think it's an interesting song. Uh, there are some moments here that are really cringe, really corny, weird, but I don't know, it's also got some charm. I'm not crazy about it, but I don't hate it as much as uh, some other people. Oh, what the fuck? Just a young gun with a quick fuse. I was uptight. <sighs> Thunder by Imagine Dragons is up next. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my life. When I first heard this song, I thought I was having a fever dream. Singing this song on the top 50 of all time is like having a PTSD flash. How the fuck did this end up here? Who the fuck listens to this? This song is terrible. Just a young gun with a quick fuse. Wanna leave my old life. Straight up sounds like a car commercial. It's just such a non-song too. It's not an intro. It's not a chorus. Not shitting you, the kick and clap section quite literally sounds like elementary school. And we used to do like choreography for stuff where we'd be like, right? It feels like that's what that is. Donda? Donda. Oh, this is the best. This is the best part of the song right here. This is him talking about how he always wanted to be great. Oh, those kids, they used to think I would be little. This song is so empty. It's literally a childhood trauma dump in the middle of the song. It's the same shit as when AJR makes a song about how they're thinking about their bully, but, they, but they're not really thinking about their old school bully, but they're wondering where- Oh my god! Oh my god, you're right, we're not even halfway through. This song actually is the longest song of all time. What the fuck? Oh, what is this reverb? The fuck? What the fuck is that? That is the worst sounding shit I've ever heard in my life. Dog. Is it not ironic that one of the most unlistenable songs of all time is about how far they've made it? Like how everyone used to look down at them and look at them now, they are now literally possibly making the worst pop song I've ever heard in my life. This shit's a zero. Dude, I love Young Thug's music, but what th this is actually his worst verse, possibly his worst performance ever, and I think it's ironic that this is the highest charting thing he's ever done, considering this is the lowest energy thing he's ever done. Th this dude's insane. Like, when this guy decides to just, like, take off the brakes, he goes literally to the moon. Let me show you one of my favorite Young Thug songs, okay? It sounds like an eight, like a solid eight for me. Never been a post-demon If I go leave
It goes so hard. Yeah, I know. You got some people in the chat. Look, everyone's uh, everyone's trying to, you know, be a contrarian here. Okay, look, Young Thug's vocal performance on this is stellar. It is so ecstatic. It is so lively, uh, pra pragmatic. It is insane. He is literally going to where no man has gone before, and it is even outside of his vocal range, but that doesn't stop him. And it's that energy, it's that confidence, which really sells a song like this. What really doesn't work is the extreme lack of confidence that he has here. Now listen to this song. It's going to make you miss this song if you hated it. Fresh out East Atlanta with no mountain breath. Damn. Hey. I was quick to pay girl like uh. That is his entire inclusion on this song. That is it. Yeah, it is actually a complete snoozer. The way he comes in is a non-starter, actually sounding like he's asleep. And man, he brings no energy. It starts to pick up by the end, but by that point, it's too fucking late, dude. He literally, it's like a stop in the song for Jeffrey to show up and just... It doesn't even sound like he gives a shit, man. The bar for male performance is on hell. No female artist could ever be allowed to have such a poor vocal delivery ever. You know, I didn't even think about that, but that actually is a good point. You're actually kind of right about that. Young Thug could get away with this, but I can't imagine a single... A female artist who would actually be able to do this and get away with it. Havana, no, no. It's the same chorus till the end. I think Havana is very catchy, but the Young Thug verse is disgustingly bad. Making it so I never want to return to this song. He ruins it. My lover's got humor. She's you know, this one's kind of an odd one out for me, as this song is so different from, like, every other song here. Uh, with 1.8 billion streams, it really shocks me that this is so high up. Like, I respect it for being this high up. Seriously, this is this is going to be a big change of tone. Every Sunday is getting morby. Maybe it's just the fact that these songs have such strong drops, but the lack of bass on this drop is actually disappointing. You don't have to make it, like, crazy sub-bass, but, like, just get some thickness into that shit, man. Like, that, it drops, and it's like, dang, man, it's your, and so fucking thin. It's gay, bro. Ah, it's gay. That's it. I've never realized it. That's why the mix is the way it is. It's gay. Ladies and gentlemen, gay men. Gay men. Not a yes, sir. Not a follower. Why is it almost four minutes long? Because this song wasn't designed as a radio song. It's just a decent song that just happened to like fit that mold. Put your dick away, Walter. I'm not having sex with you right now, Walter. I don't love every moment of Take Me to Church, but I think that the moments here that really shine are what matter to me, and I'm willing to tolerate some of the more boring moments of the verses. All I care about is the amen part in Take Me to Church, which I think is spectacular, the shining moments of this track, which make it overall for me a smiley ball. Say what you want about Post Malone's last project, but look, it's the people who made this song popular as to why this dude's fallen off, okay? He tried recreating this shit on the new album, and that shit went as south as possible. That's what happens when your worst, one of your worst songs becomes one of your biggest. Oh, sweet mother of God, this song is so slow. Oh, dude, it's 37 seconds in and we're at the first lyrics, and it's just been filler up to this point. Oh, my God. Bro, this shit mall music. Now, this song is everything I hate about Stoney, the vocal inflections that are over the top for the sake of it, with very poppy production that just completely cheapens it. Sounds like he's shivering. Not even kidding, the moment you said that, the song clicked with me. I'm not even, I'm not even shitting you. This whole song actually does sound like the winter. That actually makes a lot of sense. Is that, is that weird that that just kind of suddenly happened? Probably. It does sound like he's in the winter. The whole song is like a snowstorm. Right 
production of this song is terrible, but I will say it's won me over. Which is, what the fuck? No, I, I, I see it. It's the Post Malone Christmas album. As soon, as soon as someone said winter, I was like, you know what? Boom. And I imagined it. It was like a cabin in the snow. And the whole song just matched that aesthetic perfectly. Literally perfectly. Like the puzzle piece just went into place. And I was like, shit. And I heard it. And I was like, you know what? Okay. I, I kind of like it. All right. Yeah, good job, commenter. All right. Next. Now this song, now this song is some horse shit. Okay, I'm sorry, but listen, okay? I'm not shitting you. I used to listen to the hip hop and R&B station to fall, in, uh, fall asleep at night, every night, okay? For some reason, they thought that this song would fall into that category, and they used to play this all the time on that station. That, that was the second worst mistake they've ever made. The biggest worst mistake was playing uh, Watch Me by Silento on that station. That's what I started, that's why I was like, man, fuck this shit, what the fuck? That was an L, that was not a good, that was not a good decision. That, that actually overshadowed this, I forgot that this existed. <laughs> By the way, Silento, didn't he get arrested for killing his own cousin or something? I mean, this shit's a terrible situation. I just think it's really ironic. The dude is terrible, you know? All of me. Oh, oh shit, what, what, what year is it, huh? Oh, it's the year 2013, and this song has 1.8 billion streams in what fucking world? Why? Why is this here? 1.8 billion who listens to this who when listens to this who who and when God, my Dog. You know if, if I have to listen to this song one more time than I already have in my lifetime I'm gonna That's how much I hate this song. This is zero You guys know it, you guys love it. Okay, 1.8 billion streams. Oh, sweet mother of God. I know I already made this complaint in a recent video, so I'll keep it short. The verses of this song. You guys think the chorus is bad, dude. The verses of this song are literally... You might as well have just had a fucking instrumental. I'm sorry. I think that this is... And I'm sorry, but like, I, I'm coming in just to understand is like... My first impression of this song was I thought this was the worst song I ever heard. It was a zero for me. I thought the chorus was terrible. I heard it in between everything else on the radio, like, and I thought that this was like some sort of Weezer reject song. I, I don't know why, but that's what I thought. Nowadays, I think it's one of the strongest pop courses of the last decade. What? I think it actually works. I think it actually works, and it's incredibly strong. I think the melodies really work on this. I think that the effects are really interesting. And I also really like this intro here, the swimming in a mirror part, uh, which I think sounds really solid. Um, everything about this song is really good, except for the verses, which completely butcher it for me and could not be more boring if they tried to. Uh, yeah, I actually love the sound of these, uh, the chorus here. In fact, so much, I'm just going to skip to the next chorus. Because this, none of this shit matters. Okay, here we go. Y'all hating on him for liking something? Y'all hating on the chat for hating on me for liking for something? That shit even worse. Yeah, exactly. Now you guys are hating on the guy. I don't think you guys realize this. You are literally hating on the guy who's hating on you, who's hating on me. So that's an L for yourselves. I'm sorry. Yeah, course of the song, I would say is like a 9+. plus. I'm not shitting you. Like... My entire opinion on this song is 180'd. The verses are a zero. Overall, the song's a shrug. I know, what a fucking, what a fucking whiplash right here. I think this song is like a 5 out of 10. Is that not some shit? I think this song is completely unlistenable from front to back because the verses are so boring, they put you to sleep. They completely destroy the vibe, but I think the chorus is incredible. My entire reality is ripped in half with that. All the times that you rain on my parade you think I'm crying on my own well I ain't My mama don't like you and she likes Thanks, everyone. everyone Oh baby you should go and love yourself Look, using love yourself is like 
another way of saying fuck you is kind of a little weird, a little tacky. It takes some adjusting, but I will say after hearing this song a million times, I don't really care all that much anymore. Um, I actually think this song's pretty catchy. I kind of like the minimal guitar beat on it. Uh, the lyrics are definitely, once again, an unlikable position that Justin Bieber's playing uh, throughout this entire album, really. But Justin Bieber being himself a complete utter douchebag here on this album has more passion than whatever the fuck he's doing now, so I'll take it. Write a song, Toxic I King. Thinking I still care or don't, but I never lie. <laughs> Killed my bitch in California. <laughs> Was I a fool to let you break down my walls? Justin Bieber doesn't have lyrics, he just says catchy things and I'm okay with that. Yeah, at his best, I feel like at his worst, he has lyrics like, Girl, you got that yummy, yum, that yummy, yum, that yummy, yummy. Now that... No. See, when it, when it backfires, it really fucking backfires. I think Love Yourself is Justin Bieber's potentially best song, and I actually think it's worthy of a smiley ball. Now, I don't love this track. I still find it to be a little bit empty, and the douchebaggery of this is certainly not my thing, but I feel like the spacey guitar beat actually works pretty nice. Um, I think that solo is very tasteful, and I also like the uh, love yourself ref refrain. As much of a jackass as he comes off, it kind of works. Honestly, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Next song, Shallow, by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Uh, another song I have no clue what the fuck this is or why this has 1.85 billion streams. Came out September 2018. I, What is this exactly? Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Pause. He rhymed girl with wor world. That's it. I'm done. That's all I need to hear. That's it. She was a girl, she lived in a world. Is there something else you're searching for? Tell me something, boy. I'll never meet the ground. We're far from the shallow now. Bradley Cooper giving a long drawn out performance at the start. Gaga coming in and giving her spectacular part. And now they're coming together. And they're gonna conclude this song, which reads as one giant interlude. This shit is boring as a motherfucker. How the hell does this have 1.8 billion streams? Wow, that was a, a really spectacular payoff. Dog, get this fucking shit out of here, dude. I don't care. You kidding me? You're gonna make me sit through two and a half minutes of the most boring song I've ever heard in my fucking life for that? That shit ain't worth it. All right, the math doesn't even out. All right, that, that shit's an uneven equation. I'm sorry, but like the beginning of this song is so goddamn boring that literally the payoff doesn't fucking matter by that by the time it shows up. It doesn't even matter it's a good payoff. Why would I sit through this song again? It's like strawberries on a summer evening. Watermelon Sugar, this is a nothing song. I've heard this song recently. It's literally as nothing of a nothing song that's ever nothinged. Uh, until Harry Styles released his new album and he out nothinged himself. And that summer feeling. Bad for me, one kiss. Bad for me, I'm weak. And what's wrong with that? Why, oh boy, I love it when I fall for that. I'm weak. LOL, you're not Tyler Joseph. Fuck you. Here's a question I'm gonna put on the quiz Would Harry Styles be popular if he wasn't a part of One Direction? My guess is yes. Because boring music like this succeeds somehow in this climate, so yeah. But the fact that he is a part of One Direction is why this song has 1.8 more billion fucking streams, dude. This is like the most 5 out of 10 song ever. Like, like I don't even hate it. I just think that it's so dull. Like, it's so dull. Also, Watermelon Sugar High is really stupid. I, I, I just hate the lyrics here. Like, I can't take Watermelon Sugar High! 
watermelon sugar high seriously at all and look i'm going into this shit open-minded i think the instrumental sounds pretty nice at this point but man you, you might as well be singing this is a summer song everybody sing along this is a summer song Bro, fuck that shit. Look at this. Look how much time of this song is consumed by the words watermelon sugar high. I'm sorry, but like, that's all you need to see. That's it. I rest my case. Red headphones. Man, it just seems like this next final 25 is actual hell. Like, this looks like hell. XXX Tentacion, Chainsmokers, Ed Sheeran, Stay, God's fucking Drake. More Ed Sheeran. What is this? James Arthur? I don't even know what that is. Next song, Sad by XXXTentacion. I'd say 1.9 billion streams came out uh, March 1st, 2018. I like the beat on this one. I like the synth in the back. Poo eyes, semen, nacho feather, leather coat. Poo eyes, semen, nacho feather, leather coat. <laughs> Bro, you hear that shit? That's left in an official song? Wait. You're kidding me, dude. A song with this many listens? Do you not hear that? Where literally, like, the vocal cuts off at the very end? You hear a bit of silence before it cuts to the next? You literally hear the audible cut. In this, it's literally a splice, yeah. <laughs> I laughed at the fart demo thing because that shit hit in a little different after hearing something like that. Dude, who engineered this shit? What the fuck? That's terrible, dude. The whole point of doing the splice is it's supposed to fit naturally. It actually just cuts off right right there and there's dead silence no recording whatsoever he just disappears off the track for like a brief moment that is so bad how do i spot that boom Sennheiser hd 600s dude i'm telling you these you can hear anything okay i can hear someone taking a piss in the bathroom in the studio in the background with these fucking things dude suicide it, uh if i if you ever let go the whole song is basically like this toxic love it seems like this other person saying that and then he's responding with, I'm sad. Oh, I, wait. I'm, s wait. Wait, I, I completely misinterpreted this song. I thought it was, I, I'm sad I know you. Like, I'm sad I know you. I'm sad I know you. Right? Like, I thought it was this other person saying this and he was like reflecting. I thought he was reflecting on this situation. Right, like someone else doing that to him and that was the stress. Is this actually him saying that he's going to kill himself if they leave? He is literally the perp- Like, could this guy get more un fucking unlikable? He is literally the perpetrator of the extremely toxic negative behavior. What a fucking surprise. Seriously, what a surprise. Dog. Lovely with Khalid. All right, guys, it's nap time. It's time to get your sodas. It's time to get whatever snacks you want for the rest of the stream. Uh, we got a song that is NPC music. before Billie Eilish like you know got her act together so this is this is this is that boring shit oh, so boring. don't let this distract you from the fact that Billie's parents names are in blue on Wikipedia is this the type of shit that plays in an open world Call of Duty <laughs> open world Call of Duty Chandler Now that's a forward-thinking that's a forward-thinking donation there that's good it's so true yeah it's the most boring song i've ever listened to this shit actual like interlude or it's a shrug it's not terrible like it still has some nice strings to it it sounds okay in the background but this actual like like you couldn't pay me to pay attention to this song i'm sorry but like how the fuck who the fuck is it a better question 
Uh, it just keeps getting worse, unfortunately. Next, we have possibly my least favorite Chainsmokers song ever, least favorite Coldplay song ever, and one of my least favorite pop songs ever. One of the songs that actually caused me to stop listening to the radio entirely. Something just like this by the Chainsmokers. I've been reading books of old, Achilles and his gold, Achilles and his gifts. Imagine if Jay Z took his verse on Monster, right? But before said, I'm going to open up a storybook and tell you all the monsters I am. That's literally what this first line is. And that's literally what this shit is. It's it's so fucking bad. Sasquatch, Godzilla, King Kong, Loch Ness, Leprechaun, Mummy, Minotaur, <laughs> Werewolf, Mermaid, Frankenstein, Ophiel, Hadra, Balrog, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Pennywise the Clown, Mecha Godzilla, Man, Sam Worm, Medusa, Skinwalker, Skelly Tan, Blosa, Pumpkin Man. NPC drop to an NPC song that's supposed to be about superheroes that actually feels like a flaccid penis. I'm going to give it a red headphones and a zero out of ten. One of the worst songs I've ever heard in my life. That's a soul steal. It's so bad. See, at, at this point in the video, it is going to be very difficult getting past a minute of these songs, okay? Like, seriously, like, the next verse is the same bullshit. I've been reading books of old, the same crap. It's the same bullshit. Life, is this just fantasy? Of all fucking songs, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, this is a, this, I mean, wow, what whiplash. I mean, out of fucking nowhere. Seriously though, let's appreciate, like, if we're going to put it in the same category as all these other pop songs, then let's immediately start with the fact that the intro here is really interesting aesthetically. Starting off with, you know, the, the vocals just kind of leading as the instrumental, everything feeling very desolate, asking a question, is this real life, right? So it's setting the scene really nicely. Once the music starts coming in, everything feels really well placed. Like here when he says, any way the wind blows, he immediately comes to the center stage. If we are going to see theater court, it, sen it sounds like center stage. Sorry, 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 but I gotta take your life. To make you cry. Does it go hard with West Side Gun ad libs? Boom, 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 boom. It's crazy they made a song based on the movie. Now, Bohemian Rhapsody is a really amazing song. It's a great listen. It packs a extreme punch the way that it transforms from the very beginning, especially to this middle part, which is like my favorite. I mean, it's stellar everything stitched together really nicely the acts go together and it does more than a lot of prog rock songs do uh in like 30 minutes in a matter of six minutes it's a stellar track to shrug why it's boring music okay it's like tupac you know what i'm saying nobody listen to that shit all right hey no i'm just kidding it's a smiley ball I don't think it's my favorite for the day. It's not something I'd really care too much to return to. It's like probably just under sicko mode for me. I'm trying, trying to put, put you in the worst, worst mood. Mood. Yeah. Racks, the table come from Ebony. I forgot how overplayed this song is. I haven't heard this song in forever. Uh, is it just me or did this song just kind of disappear into the background? I mean, this one was literally like nonstop on repeat. Yeah, this is the dude from Uncut Gems, yeah. No, it's not Adam Sandler, the other guy. Strap Away is a pretty fun song, it's certainly overplayed. I feel like this song definitely had more of a punch for me uh, when I first heard it, and I feel that way with a lot of modern Daft Punk, especially on their, uh, their, their latest album, or their last album, I should say. Um, Random Access Memories, I felt that way with a lot of the hits on that. Uh, they were nice the first time I heard them, but the more I heard them, the less I started uh, really caring for them. Um, I kind of feel the same way with this track. I overall like it. It's a smiley ball for me, but um, I just don't love it as much as when I initially heard it. All right, well, that's the end of the good songs for now, or at least for a while. Look at this photograph. You know it can get hard sometimes. You make these memories for our 
myself inside the pocket of your ripped jeans. Loving can man just. I'm not skipping yet. I'm waiting for it to get good, you know? Holy shit, this song still has three minutes left. You guys gotta hold on to hope. This music inspires. Okay. It's not even a terrible song. That's the thing. It's like it's decent. It's sweet. Like the the sentiment's really nice. But but man, this shit's straight up X Factor core, dude. It's a shrug for me, dog. You don't wanna see me. We still have like 50 Ed Sheeran songs left to go. So let us continue. Don't start now by Dua Lipa. What even is this? Bro, 2 billion plays? Wait, did I listen to this recently? Yeah, no, so nice on this shit, dude. Such a dreamy pre-chorus, dude. Incredible songs, Smiley Ball, Huge Smiley Ball, A Breath of Fresh Air, and a sea of songs that really make me feel literally nothing. Uh, this song really has a pulse and and super catchy dude i mean the song is just solid as shit instrumental is great the mixing is great i have no issues with this it is just a fun funky banger dua lipa in her own lane here man she really kills it <sighs> i gotta stop being excited dude The Kid Leroy is the full package of unlikability, meeting uh, douchebag number two with Justin Bieber, creating one of the most unlikable super hits I've ever heard in my fucking life. I've heard this song recently. I'm not going to sit through this again. You can't make me. Red headphones. Dog. Cuddle me. Oh man, that kicks like a motherfucker, dude. Such a great sample too, dude. I hope back sometimes I won't. I only love my bed and my mom. I'm sorry. 50 dub. God's playing fucking slaps. It's a smiley ball for me. Drake, boring as shit on this song, but he actually finds an avenue and a song that complements his boring style, making this song actually slap, and the more I listen to it, the more I enjoy it. Yeah, there's a lot of weak lines on here, but the beat's very chill and easy to listen to, and when it hits, it hits. And yeah, there's some goofy shit here, like, I only love my bed and my mom, I'm sorry. But as weak as that shit is, it still kind of slaps. Even though it's not true and, you know, it's literally you know, hiding a child and shit. Dude, he got destroyed in this album cycle, dude. It's hard to take this shit seriously, but I find it to be a fun song with uh, great production. He even acknowledges that without his producers, uh, he wouldn't be shit. And he's right. Said and done, I you were the one listening to my heart instead of my head, ending inside my grave. I have these lucid dreams where now I'm just better off. You gave me a heart that was full of mistakes. I gave you my heart. Lucid Dreams is a song that initially I misread as being unlikable. This emo trap wave continuing in a very negative direction with how straightforward it was. Um, but the more I listened to this song and the more Juice World kind of was coming out with, you know, music and whatnot, um, he turned out to be one of the most likable and down-to-earth people doing this sound. And I feel like that helped recontextualize a lot of the music for me. This song feels extremely passionate. I think that this is a wonderful super hit. Putting aside, you know, the overplayedness of this song or whatever, um, I think it is one of the best emo smashers, uh, period. Yeah, yeah, give me those dubs. Give me that fucking, give me those dubs. Give me that shit. Um, nom, 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 nom. When your legs don't work like they used to before. 
Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. I never really had a problem with this song. Maybe today's the day I have a problem with it. I don't know. When your legs don't work like they used to before. Because I gave you that good deep fish. dick. Will your mouth still remember the, the taste, taste of my nut? Will be loving you. you. Cause you're 17. Hey, officer. Hey, oh, shit. I think it has enough of a movement to it to keep me engaged. I think that the singing's really sweet. I like the way that it goes. It's like an instant payoff. Um, I find this to actually be one of the better songs from this era. Well, me, I fall in love with you every single day. Kiss, Kiss me, me under the light of a thousand stars. stars. My my God in my memory fake. Gang, 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 Pounce. If you steal my ounce, I'm selling weed. Selling that and footstand to that baby now. I like thinking out loud. I like it. Smiley Ball, one of my favorite Ed Sheeran songs. Um, what is it about this song that works for me that the other ones don't? I don't know. This one very passionately sung. Maybe I'm just don't really care that much about the lyrics, but I, I just really like the sound of this one. It is wedding core, but I think it's pretty well done. Karaoke core, it's fun to sing along with, admittingly. I, I think that is part of my enjoyment. All right, next song, Say You Won't Let Go by James Arthur. I don't know who the fuck James Arthur is. X Factor person? Oh God, it's an X Factor industry plant, huh? We danced the night away. I held your hair back when. Bro, I must have just turned off the radio every time this came on because I don't know what the fuck this is. And you smiled over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. For a minute, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. stone cold sober. I knew I loved you then, but you'd never know. Say you won't let go. Hey, f this sh Get the f out of here with this fing bullshit. NPC core. How the who? 2.1 billion, my ass, dude. This is the most boring shit ever, dude. My god. Actual Hallmark core. No, this is the, the like, actually, though, like, with no visual stimulation, this boardroom written coffee table bullshit, man. Get the f out of here. I'm not listening to this crap. Stars for the night. As we burn like in love hours. A sorrow. Shrug. I changed my red headphones to a shrug because the song's intensity went up as it went along, becoming more passionate and less like NPC core, admittingly, so, uh... Still boring as shit, man. My god. Bad guy, Billie Eilish. You know, funny enough, so I went to see Fleet Foxes yesterday, and whoever mixed the audio of that shit must have been drunk. Uh, they must have forgotten to change the mixing from Pitbull performing there or something because the bass was so loud that, uh, oh, what's his name? The guy who sings for Fleet Foxes, his voice literally sounded like that one moment in Bad Guy. was like, I'm the bad guy. The bass was so intense. Yeah, Robin. Yeah, no, his voice literally sounded like that. Yeah, Robin Pecknell. Yeah, it was actually terrible. I had a fun time at the concert. I, I enjoyed it, but like... That shit was so obnoxious. It would feel weird not to address this in the final video, but I did end up having a bit of a, um, a bad panic attack about... We had like a weed conversation. It lasted about eight minutes, so if you see the chat gravitating in that direction, that's why. Just letting you know, I did end up cutting it though, cause it's irrelevant to the video. I like this drop a lot. I'm the Brad guy. I like when you get mad. <sighs> it's, the, the final part of the song is hot ass. It's terrible. Song when it's catchy, it's good. When it's edgy, it's dog shit. And that's pretty much the entire album in a nutshell. It's a shrug. I found a love 
before. Next, we got another Ed Sheeran song. Yay! It's perfect off of Divide. Oh, it's this crap. Okay, totally thinking out loud was out of nostalgia. I, I swear, there's no other reason why. Like, I can't unsee it. Right, but there's no way that that song clicks with me as much as it does, and this one is as fucking boring as it is. That's the only explanation. What do you guys think of that one? Bravo, huh? Grass, barefoot on the grass. Bruh. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll add ad libs. That might help. Mess. Gang, 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 gang. Boom, boom, boom. Well, that didn't save it. This song boring as shit. Red headphones. Fuck this. Dog. Next song is Believer by Imagine Dragons. It's not even the Lil Wayne version. Okay. 2.2 billion streams. 2.2. Billion streams, dude. The biggest rock song of all time. No, it is. It's 102.7 Uncut Rock. First things first, I'm gonna say all the words is Bro, what? Dude, what the fuck? Look at the hours. Tina's trying to order at a place, a Vietnamese place. Look at these hours. The fuck? Who's closed for five days out of the week except for Wednesday and... No, it's... Yo, Wednesday and Monday? Wednesday and Monday are the only days it's open? It's closed every other day of the week? It closes at 8.30 as well. It's not even open, like, past 8.30. Oh, my God. <laughs> Money laundering? Wait, actually, though, that's... Actually... <laughs> It's so funny. I did not even think of that, but money laundering, that is so fucking funny. No way that things have been, uh, I would Fuck this shit. You guys ever hear the uh, Lil Wayne version of this song, okay? Now, Lil Wayne goes way harder on this song than anyone ever fucking should, and it is the better version of this song. I think this song is boring as shit, but Lil Wayne on this shit. Yeah, he does an okay job. What's about to happen is we see the dragon. I link with the dragon. Whatever it is, I know the passages come with some traffic. I start from the basement, end up in the attic. And this hole is you a believer? I think your step type is really kind of you. I wear my uniform like a tuxedo. I know that torch don't come without Wayne. I know that beauty don't come without. Don't come without. Whoa, this shit actually good. Why? Why does he go so hard on this shit? Like, for some reason, the large synthetic beat, when you take away the rock element of it, kind of works with Lil Wayne. I love the way that it goes back into the chorus, which is really clever. He, he manages to do, like, what Imagine Dragons was doing, but, like, in his own style. That's a W verse. But the song sucks, red headphones. Dog. I'm not listening to the rest of the song. Believer is trash. It is radio filler, super overblown, um, and completely unenjoyable for me. I find these screeching vocals to sound like nails on a chalkboard, and I get little to no enjoyment from the actual song itself. Senorita, I don't even know if I've ever heard this song before. Oh, okay, it sounds familiar. The song came out June 2019. Yeah, I stopped listening to the pop radio sometime at this point, so I don't... I, don't even know what the fuck this is. Dude, why is she singing like a dying seal here, dude? Is that really necessary? Do you not hear all these vocal effects on this shit, dude? Why does it literally sound like it's got like a, a caffeine attack going on? Like the whole song feels so shaky. This is agonizing. Why is this so bad? You've heard better sounds come out of my ass? Or out of your ass? I mean, let's be honest here, okay? I, who doesn't sniff their own farts? I mean, come on, that's- 
they hated Jesus because he spoke the truth. Oh yeah, no, like literally the entire chat's full of people who are literally like part of the FBI who just, they hear something sus, they pull out the cameras, and then they go back asleep right afterwards. I mean, it might as well be like human traffic cams. Human traffic? Traffic cameras who are humans. Edutate? <laughs> hey, no cameras! No cameras! Bro, fuck this. Is this song getting any better? This is terrible. This is, this is such a bad hit. I see why it's a hit, because, like, the, the chorus is catchy, but it's literally mixed like horse shit. Like, it's so processed, it you could actually get, like, cancer from consuming too much of this. Charlie is one of, only one of the eight credited writers. Let's be, wait, what? There's eight writers to this song. Huh? The fuck? That's a lot of people. That's so many people and this song is such garbage. This song is ass and red headphones. I don't like it. I just don't like it. I don't like the sound of it. Next, we have a song by the Chainsmokers. I'm talking closer, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the carbon copy hits that they had that actually went big. My dog has to use the bathroom. No, you. You're muted. You're muted. I can't hear you. Oh, oh, it looks like you guys only have a small little stake in this stream. Watch this. Boom! Look at that. The chat disappeared. You can't even see them anymore. That's how little stake they actually have in this. They think that they, they think that they matter. Okay, let's be honest. The people in the chain smokers, like like Halsey is not an NPC. But this guy, whoever the fuck's talking right now, whichever chain smoker number one or two this is, this dude's actually an NPC on his own song. Let's be real. Like like they actually have no personality on their own tracks. Too much and that's an issue, but I'm okay. Claps are obnoxious. For some reason, why did I think you said you can't afford it like the tattoo on your shoulder? What does it bite the tattoo on your shoulder even mean? A lot of people thought that too. No, I mean, now that I hear it, it definitely sounds like they're saying bite. Oh, I just, I just love how he goes into every single detail, like, pull the sheets right off the corner of that mattress that you stole from your roommate back in Boulder. Wow. Even though this drop is very maximal, right? Like the, the, the synth is very blah, 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 right in your face. And I feel like the hits are also uh, in that way. I, I think that sounds okay. I actually think this is one of their best drops. Uh, one of the few drops that actually manages to work with the song uh, that I don't hate, funny enough. Um, I don't think it's nearly as obnoxious as something, uh, something like, j something like, something just like this. Closer is way worse than I remember. I thought this was actually going to be pretty decent, but admittingly, the production kind of sucks ass everywhere besides the pretty decent drop. I think that the verses also suck ass. Halsey giving too much information about Blink-182. Yeah, this is cringe. This is bad. It's unfortunate. Oh, I also thought he said, I keep a check. Wait, it's, it still sounds like I keep a check. I mean, the reverb is so intense. You can't even, huh? I get money, exactly. Baby, I'm erect. <laughs> That's the problem when you have a song like this with just so much fucking reverb is, it just all becomes mush. Sunflower is nice, even though it's completely oversaturated and reverb, it's one of those few instances where I don't think it's as bad as like a song like uh, Unforgettable. Um, I think it's okay, actually. I'd give it a smiley bowl. 
I think that Post Malone and Sway Lee complement each other nicely, and I think this is one of the few good Sway Lee solo tracks. Baby, I, like I hate this song. I I'd give this song a zero before it even starts, just due to how much it fucking ruined music. Seriously, One Dance is one of the most destructive songs in terms of bringing dance hall, at least to the pop world, and just literally creating a wave that did not need to exist of the most boring music I've ever heard in my fucking life. Honestly? Honestly? Never mind. Dog. Next, we have Louis Capaldi. Louis Capaldi, one of the strongest vocalists of all time, one of the best singers of our generation. 2.4 billion streams came out 2018. Who the fuck? How the fuck? I'm going on during the time of fear the old and nothing really go the way you're driving. I'm going on during this time I fear the nothing will save me. I need somebody to hear to know. Somebody. Somebody to help. Somebody to help. Dog. Rockstar featuring 21 Savage. I like this song a lot. Lewis Graham. Yes, Lewis Graham. I've been in the hills, fucking dudes. That little bitch is always asking where the coke at. Living like a rock star. Swagner says, why they got so many listens on this trash? Because it's beautifully produced with a large wave of bass and extremely catchy chorus, very iconic lyrics. Bringing the best of Post Malone together with a very solid uh, 21 Savage feature. I think this is a fantastic track. I'd give it a smiley bowl. Uh, very happy to see this song up here as it makes sense for being up here as well as it's really good, so I'm pretty happy. You guys aren't ready for the next one. I'm telling you, you ain't ready. I'm talking Dance Monkey. Number three, most streamed song of all time came out 2019. 2.6 billion streams. Owens and I, I made a video listening to Welcome to the Madhouse for six and a half hours, okay? I can handle Dance Monkey once, you know? I've built up a tolerance. Song makes me want to cry. Did you guys know that? Song makes me want to cry. Take the worst Disney villain solo number. Put it to the worst singer of all time over the worst theater core beat of all time. And you have literally the worst song I've ever heard in my fucking life. Dog. Blinding Lights, next song, very good song. They actually have good music on this list. I've been on my own for long enough. Baby, I said, Ooh, I'm blinded by the lights. Oh, the city's cold and empty. This song is uh, spectacular and one of the few instances where I truly believe a song is popular because it's good. Speaking of popular because it's good, just kidding, final song here is Shape of You by Ed Sheeran with 3.2 billion streams. Hey. Me and 
my friends at the table doing shots, tripping fast, and then we talk slow. See, I, I don't really like this beat all that much, and I think it's aged poorly because of the existence of one song. That's right. Lil Dicky's Earth. Lil Dicky heard Shape of You, so that's the most popular song of all time. Let me make a beat that sounds exactly like it. It's your boy, just one of the guys down here. And uh, just wanted. Not good. Crazy, don't mind me, say boy. Let's not talk too much. At least this song is well produced. I mean, like, very well produced. I can't fucking say that about, like, Dance Monkey or someone you loved. Like, like this song actually is well put together, even though I don't enjoy it. I'm not listening to this fucking song. I don't care if it's number one, dude. I'm not listening to this shit. Fuck this shit. Red headphones. Born as a motherfucker. Dog. I can't even get through this song, okay? You know what I'm saying? I'm too good for pop music. It's not the worst song I've ever heard. It's more like a shrug. I think that the catchy little plucky beat's fine, and in the background, it sits in the background, and I don't think that, uh, like, I'm, honestly, as much as people despise this song, I don't hate this being number one as much as some other people. Um, it makes sense to me, honestly. It's got, like, you know, it's got all the things, you know? Got quirky, weird lyrics. It's got the catchy chorus, the plucky beat. It's, it's, it's all there. You know, it sounds like number one. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to be doing the ranking off stream. Uh, and yeah, it will be all these songs from one to uh, one to 100. You'll go worst to best. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna look nice. The video is gonna look sexy. All right, we're gonna have a good time doing that. So thank you everyone so much for their, uh, joining in this live stream. I've had a great time with you guys and enjoy the rest of your day. What's up you guys? Don't switch that dial. Okay, we have the final ranking here. A lot of stuff has changed upon revisiting a lot of these songs. So I have the final ranking for you guys. Okay, I did a listen over of all these tracks. Uh, and yeah, there's been actually a lot of changes, so I'm so I'm, I'm excited to go over them with you. Uh, starting off with the very worst song of this entire list is something just like this, The Chainsmokers and Coldplay. This song gives me anxiety. The drop sucks, the Coldplay feature is comatose, and I think the superhero thing is cringe. It feels like they're capitalizing on something that's popular. All of Me by John Legend. This song just has a deep hole in my heart that I that I just I can't listen to this song. It drives me insane. I, I can't listen to this fucking song anymore. I, I don't like the singing. I don't like the lyrics. Not for me. One Dance is the final song here on the zero out of tens as I think that this song is actual cancer. The negative effect of this song is, uh, yeah, the tectonic waves of this bullshit. Uh, still, we're all suffering today. Drake's performance is so boring and comatose. It's terrible. Number four, we have Dance Monkey. This song is ass. All right, Let Her Go uh, by Passenger. This song is completely unlistenable. Boring as a motherfucker. Uh, you only miss the things that you don't have the song. Closer. This actually shrunk on me quite a lot. I think the drop is terrible. I think the song is cringe. I'm surprised how much it dropped on me, but yeah, no. Oh, is garbage. Someone You Loved by Louis Capaldi. This is just as mediocre as you can fucking get with a song like this. Stay, Kid Leroy, worst mega hit in a while. Say You Won't Let Go is so boring. This guy's an Ed Sheeran wannabe. Z, 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 Z. Same with this lovely song by Billie Eilish. I can't listen to this shit. It's so slow, so unengaging. Then we have Perfect by Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Jocelyn Florence. <laughs> not even a song, not even a full experience. It, sad should definitely be higher, but man, I hate the lyrics on this one. Believer by Imagine Dragons has a great wheezy feature. But on the original song, it's just eh. But I do hope Dan's doing okay. Um, as I, I, I'm thinking of making a video, uh, you guys would see. It, it would be an interesting one uh, addressing uh, uh, negativity towards bands in just general that I talk about. It doesn't fully reflect how I feel about the artist. Stressed out by 21 Pilots. Uh, I'm tired of hearing this shit. Havana. It's kind of catchy, but Young Thug kills this in not a good way. Watermelon Sugar is a nothing song. Shallow is shallow. Not my thing. Uh, photograph, not as good as the Nickelback version. Then we have um, Senorita, which actually grew on me. I thought this one was garbage when I first heard it, but I got to say, returning to it, it's catchy, and these two have some pretty okay chemistry. Let Me Love You shrunk on me, as I just feel like DJ Snake's sound in general is just old and outdated and isn't doing the same for me nowadays. Shape of You, right here in the middle, uh, the most popular song on the list. It's listenable.
Heat Waves has an incredible chorus and one of the and literally some of the worst verses I've ever heard in my life. Exo Tour Life has an incredible beat and Uzi just kind of eh on it. Lean On Shrunk on Me for the same reason as the other one. DJ Snake's sound is just not that great. It's very gimmicky. Counting Stars is whatever it's fine. God's plan shrunk. Oh wait, just because Drake is so fucking boring. Circles by Post Malone shrunk me a little bit. Um, as I think that the production sucks on this song. Now, here's the biggest jump. Um, this Happier by Marshmallow and Bastille, I had it a 2 out of 10. Uh, it went from a 2 minus to a 6 plus in spirit of this song being so bipolar. Because I was listening to this and I was like, you know what? This is catchy. I like this. I don't know why I like it. It shouldn't work, but it does. Roses. Catchy little house song. All right, now we got the songs that I really like. Sunflower. Yeah. Good chemistry between the two artists. And we have Humble. It's pretty okay. Take Me to Church is a gay song. It's pretty good. Amen. New Rules is very catchy by Dua Lipa. Grew me a little bit, um, even though I still think she didn't really fully have her shit figured out. Thinking Out Loud is a bit of a fluke, as I find edgier and it'd be so boring. But I like the guitar lick, and it's fun to sing along with. Love Yourself by Justin Bieber is also another oddity, as it's unlikable, but yet, I don't know, it's one of his strongest songs. Um, it's actually okay. Seven Rings grew on me a lot. Ariana Swagger completely carries this. Starboy grew on me also, uh, even though I said, like, oh, I'm kind of tired of this. In a nutshell, the song is actually really freaking well made. Um, and it feels good to hear it again outside of, like, being alive and having all these other factors. I'm able to focus on it and be like, yeah, it's pretty good. Bohemian Rhapsody shrunk on me a little bit because it's just not my fucking thing. Great song, not my thing. Blinding Lights, uh, I also overestimated this song a little bit as it's just a really great pop song, but I don't know, it's not like, you know, starting a new wave of anything. Wake Me Up is uh, carried by the feature being so amazing, but I also feel like Avicii has a good understanding of what makes this song work. Uh, a lot better than a lot of other EDM artists here. Bad Guy grew on me significantly. Um, I don't know, man. Just something about this shit clicked. And I ended up finding this to be one of the most enjoyable of the entire list. Uh, making me want to revisit that album entirely and see how I feel about it now. Better now. Casey, I like it. Lucid Dreams. One of the best Juice World songs. The production mainly kind of stinks, but I don't know. It has that SoundCloud um, charm to it. Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa is incredibly catchy, really fun to listen to, good track. Sicko Mode by Travis Scott, Sicko Mode, iconic, great shit. Rockstar by Post Malone and 21 Savage is number one for me, which I also didn't expect, um, but I feel like the cold demeanor and uh, calculated delivery of this song feels really clever, and it's a great listen. So, yeah. If I had to readjust, I might... I mean, it's like these ones at the top, I just all very much like them all. I, I would say... You can kind of pick and choose what's the best about, like, the stuff that's, like, uh, 9 or 8 plus. But overall, yeah, there's some there's some great songs on this list. I'm not going to do a list that's combining both of them because it's a waste of time since I already did two lists and I have all the scores connected to it. Uh, best song on this entire list overall, if I was to check here. I don't want to make any edits. I'm, I'm so tired. I've been working on this video nonstop, so I apologize if I'm just getting lazier here at the end. Worst song of the entire list, tied between seven years and something just like this, and I don't care. Uh, best song, fucking Eminem, Lose Yourself, that shit unfair. But I'd say it's probably like Industry Baby, Lose Yourself, and then um, Rockstar. I'd say those three are my favorites out of the entire list. All right, thank you guys for watching so much. This is the end of this extremely long venture. This video took so fucking long to make, so please leave a like, share it. Rewatch it if you want. All right, it's good ass content. All right, all right. Thanks. Peace.